everyone. We are super excited about this video. We have been trying to get to this point for quite a while. And to be honest with you, I didn't know when we were ever going to be able to do it. But um, <laughs> finally, we're upgrading our solar system. And we're absolutely shocked that we could actually get it done. So with that being said, take it away, Stu. Good afternoon. Okay, I know it's not morning. Because I've been, I've spent all morning uh, reading and studying this new solar stuff we're going to be putting in. Let me show you guys what we have. I have moved everything down, taken off some components, and put a piece of plywood up there. I got to screw that in. You don't want me. You don't want to see me screwing in a piece of plywood so i'm gonna get that screwed in and then uh get a couple boards cut and then you can watch me struggle with the inverter how's that sound you guys want to watch me struggle with the inverter i'm sure you do <laughs> okay, so let me try and explain what's going on. We needed to mount this to withstand, according to the instructions, like 60 pounds of weight. We could have put a shelf up, but then that just would have, would have been riding on a 2x4 here and a 2x4 or a stud here, stud here. Probably would have been fine. I've used those big shelf brackets and had some serious weight on them. But the only way that would have worked is if this was laying down. And because of the profile of it, it would have stuck out a foot from the wall. Right now it's eight inches from the wall or nine inches from the wall with these right here. So what I did was the piece of plywood, I timber locked all the way around. Uh, oh crap, what is it? One two, three, four, five on the top, two on each side. And then I screwed into the studs, four screws in each stud going all the way up. Then these supports here, I still got to finish the bottom, but these supports here, six screws, two on the bottom, two in the middle, two on the top on each one of these pieces of wood. And then, and those are just going straight into three quarter inch plywood. And then this has eight timber locks on it going through this into the plywood. And hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll stand. If it doesn't stand, then we'll revisit it and I'll have to take everything apart and pull the wall down and put in two by four bracing all the way up where we need it to go. But I think it'll work. I think it will too. And uh, it's a Magnum 4024, which is a 4,000 watt, 24 volt, pure sign inverter. So it'll handle whatever we need to handle. And uh, yeah, that's it for this little doodad. Are you excited to get rid of your spaghetti mess? Oh yeah. I mean, it's even more of a mess now that I've kind of pushed everything down. So we got a mess going on. Right now I am measuring what we need. So these 
two breakers right here are going to be the disconnect for the charge controllers. So we got the one on the right will be this wire. The one on the left will be this wire. And I know, isn't that a mess? It's scary. And then we got to wire up the inverter to this breaker box and this breaker box. And I will explain that all to you when we get there as to why the inverter is going to two breaker boxes. Not many people understand it. Only a couple of people understood why I did it the way I did it, but we'll get there when we get there. So right now I am putting eyelets on the wire that are going to go to the negative. I got a shunt. I'm going to put this shunt in here. So everything will get wired to the shunt, not here. I'm just kind of using this as reference for how long stuff needs to be. Hard to film and do this all at the same time. Tony's going to be like, you need to hold the camera steady. So they don't need to fit and they're perfect right now. Okay, the short one goes there, boom, long one goes there, boom. We gotta put solar on hold for a minute. We need some, uh, some parts to come in and they should be in this afternoon. So in the meantime, it's time for the 500 hour service on the tractor and I'm just gonna let you guys sit and watch me. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some degreaser and get rid of all the grease and the zerk fittings and all that kind of happy stuff and all around the whole tractor. Well, I didn't film the hydraulic change yesterday. It turned out to be an absolute nightmare. Those uh, plugs turned out to be a serious issue getting them back in. And I was fit to be tied. I'm not sure what it was, but It was a nightmare. So we're back at it. And then again today, I mean, just to change the hydraulic fluid was, I can't even tell you, it took forever. I swear to God, one plug, it took like a 
half hour to get in. It kept cross-threading. I don't know if that's a problem that I need to address with the dealer. Or it's just me laying on my back in a bunch of rocks. And something else I noticed when I was under there that kind of torqued me off a bit was uh, <coughs> the oil pan is kind of U-shaped, so you have to actually drain both sides of it, and I didn't notice that. So the first time I did it, I only drained one side. All right. So oil is drained. Go back over here. Say hi, Tony. She's bucking up wood over there. Goose is out here. Gabby's here somewhere. Hi, Goose. Yeah, another thing that's really screwed up, I'll show you when we get there. There's a sensor on the bottom of the fuel filter. Is a joke to get off. Fill her up with oil. That sensor just doesn't like to come out. The few times that I've had to uh, drain the fuel out or the water out has been a complete bear. Get down. Get down. All right, well, we got the tractor all serviced. Um, don't know how much I got on camera, actually, because it was kind of, had a couple challenges. Uh, first challenge was getting the drain plugs back in for the hydraulic fluid and the hydraulic transmission fluid, and that was just, it was a bear. It took way longer than it should have. I don't know if it's a, a manufacturer issue or a steward issue. We'll find out. But she's all serviced. She's all washed and clean, lubed up, greased up. I even found some zerks that I didn't know were there. That concerns me because I've never touched them. So, yeah. I even went through the stupid manual to try and uh, find everything. And for some reason, those two just eluded me. And both of them were on the front, uh, the front drive line where it goes through the front differential. And that was kind of a pain in the butt. But everything's all greased. I got all the grease, most of the grease cleaned up out of the Zerks. And uh, yeah, we're all good. So... Let's uh, go inside. 
I will show you what's been going on inside. I think we are ready to finish hooking up the components. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to do that because you guys know electricity is not my forte. Say hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> Say hi, Goose. Hi, Gabby. Gabby's not doing good. She uh, played too hard yesterday and didn't want to listen and we kind of let her play a little bit more than she should have, so her leg is doing really bad today. So anyway, so we got the inverter is up, wired with uh, 83. Is it 83? 83, yes. 83 going over to this panel. The generator plugs into this panel. And when we flip this breaker on, this breaker will feed the inverter to charge the batteries. Then I got this cable moseying around over here. I got a little bit more to do to get that one put up. We'll go in here to feed the house or the cabin. We have complete DC shutdown with breakers. We can shut off with these two breakers right here. We can shut off the charge controllers charging the batteries. These two breakers right here will shut off the solar panels coming into the cabin. This breaker here will shut off the batteries going into the inverter and all that. So my big mess, I got a little bit of wire work to do in and are out. So then all I need to do is do the wires going from here down to the batteries. So these will shut off the charge controllers going to the batteries. We'll have wire a set of wires going from here to the batteries. Now, one problem I ran into, I wanted to run two gauge wires. According to the solar company that is helping us, four gauge is fine. So, we'll see what happens with that i got some 90 degree cable ends so i can custom fit these cables to go up to the inverter and then i got more cable to make the cables going down to the batteries when we change them to 24 volt i know it's a mess and it's scary it scares me too but we almost got it so now i think that's about it so anyway, you guys, catch you on the next one. Enjoy your week. Live life your way. Toodles. Rinker, say toodles. Toodles.